Hello everybody and welcome back to a copy of Professor Walker's. I'm sorry but the instructions in the book weren't quite clear enough. So let's go ahead here and take a look um, at our access project and let's see if I can clear it up for you. So in our cases over here we're looking at our week 5 access blackboard project and you'll see the steps it's going to want us to take and I'll go ahead and I'll talk with y'all um, along with us as we go through um, uh, as we go through this assignment. But let's look over here at step number one and ask you to create a blank access database. So let's go ahead and open up over here a um, I'll click over here and click on a sorry bring open over here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new uh, blank database and in this case here you see it wants to know the file name it also wants to know where you're going to save it. So in our case here we're actually going to go ahead uh, here and pop into put this into the folder that we want to go ahead and um, and keep it in which in this case here is going to be again this uh, week 5 uh, access uh, um, Eli Walker actually this is we're going to go ahead and actually do week 5 uh, uh, Eli Walker uh, dash 3 and you'll see why uh, soon enough we're going to come on back and pick up on uh, on one and two a little bit later so again here's our week five access uh, number three so we're going to go ahead and create this now you don't want to just click and file save as when you're, when you're in the middle of this because access databases are very complicated all databases are complicated so you want to go ahead and set up a firm foundation you don't want to just move it around like you might with, do with a Word file or an Excel file because if you lose any one part of this database, the whole database is going to fall apart. So in our case here, we've gone ahead and um, we've created this access database here. In your case, of course, it won't have the number after it, but um, you'll see um, uh, where it is. So now in this case over here, it says on step number two, save the default uh, uh, table one as um, uh, as personal information. So in our case over here, what I'm actually going to do uh, on over here um, is I'm going to go ahead and right click on table one and then um, uh, uh, excuse me uh, and then uh, click on the save and save uh, and I click over here on the save uh, button here. And it's going to ask me the name that I want, want to save it as. And so again, in this case here, I'm going to put in personal information. And click on OK. And so now we have a database, or excuse me, we have a table here called personal information. And you see that this, we started to make the structure on out here. Now, that's the first thing that, that uh, we've done here. Now let's move on over here um, uh, to the rest of, of part two and let's change the structure of this database. So the way the book will tell you to do is they'll just help tell you to go ahead and hit tabs and then change things as you go along. That's probably not the best way to do it. What we want to do uh, here is we want to go ahead and click on uh, click on this. Again, stop two. And in our case here, we're going to want to go ahead and uh, change this right here, which is going to be our structure view. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to remove this primary key um, because that primary key, if we put anything, put it out there and there's, there are blanks in it, it's not going to let you go any further. They don't tell you about that about the book, but I want you all to know that. So here we have over here in the primary key. We're going to take this on out here and we're going to put in here all the information that's here in the this student view. So in our case here, it's going to be student ID. Our, our data type is not auto number. Do auto number is just going to put things in there what it thinks should go. We're just going to go ahead and call this into a number. And our description uh, is going to be unique identifier of student. And we're going to come on down here to the caption since we have this all set, set over here. And our caption is going to be ID. And this is what's going to actually show when we go ahead and uh, put our information here. They have the default number here as zero. I want you to take that out, please. Uh, and, um, uh, and then on that case here, let's go ahead and start putting the rest of this information in here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the field names first. First name. 
last name, street, city, state, postal code, phone number, and date of birth. Okay, so in our case here, we see the first one is number, and all these others are short text up until the last one here, date of birth, and this over here is going to be date time. Boom. And then let's go ahead and look at each one of these uh, thing and each one of these fields um, and change the properties. So over here on the field size, we don't have to worry about the field size of the student ID. They'll take care of itself. Our first name, though, if you see here the properties, it says that this is 255 for a field size. We don't want that. We're going to want 20. Our last name, we're also going to change that to 20 from 255 to 20. Mm, our street on over here. Oops. So I look, I made a mess up here. So I want to go ahead and do 20. Oops, not, not 25, 20. Okay, our, our street over here is going to be 30. Our city is going to be 25. Our state is going to be 2. Now again, this is the part where I want to tell you that you, we want to make these as small as possible because these databases, if you have a lot of blank spaces in them, they'll go ahead and um, and mess up with you. They'll just get too big to work with. So you want to keep these as small and as compact as later. So again, in this case here, we're going to do two. Our postal code, we're not going to use the five plus three. We're just going to use five or five plus four, I'm sorry. The phone number is going to be a little bit different. Our phone number here is going to be 20. But we're going to make another little change here in the phone number. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put in an input mask. So if you pop on down here and look over here at the input mask and click here. It doesn't look like there's anything, but follow my cursor until it comes over here and click down. And then it says I got saved before I do anything else. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and save. So I just save this and here's the phone number format that we want to do. So let's see if this is going to be what we want. 555-555-1212. Oops, didn't like that. Let's try it again. 555-555-1212. Okay, so yeah, that looks exactly the way that we want to type it on out. So we we'll go ahead and click next over here on this next. Um, and in this case here, um, actually in my case here, I'm going to uh, want to go ahead and I want, want to change it over to here. So it looks like this, even though the um, instructions don't tell you to do that. Click on next and then let's go ahead and finish. Okay, and then we're going to pop over here to the date of birth. Here and on our date of birth, we have a caption for DOB. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and come up here and we're going to save this structure here. And once we've saved the structure, then it's written into the database itself. So we'll go ahead and save the structure and then we'll change it on over in here. Now, here's a point where we're going to want to go ahead and type in uh, our information here um, uh, at, this, at this spot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop. Uh, this portion right here um, and then we're going to go ahead and continue on with part two where we'll start putting in information. Okay, so let's look for part two.